take it. So uh, I was thinking earlier, you know, Lord, is there an opportunity time to say what you've been uh, speaking to me in my heart? And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit functions and works, and then Amen. time just comes around. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all know that the Word of God tells us to be not conformed to this world. Amen. That word conformed is like a schematic. You take an architectural schematic. That's right. And it says, do not be conformed, do not be schematized, I would say, if that's a word of any kind. Mm -hmm. You know, to the, to the ways of this world, be transformed by what? The renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord's really been speaking to me about faith, and he's been speaking to me about the church and repentance. Now, the church has come to a place over the years in which, how many of you grew up thinking that the worst, uh, the worst perverted sin was worse than cheating on your taxes? <laughs> right? All right. Where the church has repented of and has a new mindset because we're no longer conformed to that thinking is the fact that we realize now that whether or not it's perversion or whether or not it's cheating on your taxes is one and the same sin under the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen? Amen. So the Lord was speaking to me and he says, it's time for the church to have a renewed mind concerning faith. He took me to Romans 12, 3, which says he's given, that each and every one of us has been given the measure of faith. That's right. He hasn't given you a measure of faith. He didn't give Larry a measure, me a measure, and you a measure that's a different measure. He gave you the measure, measure of faith. Of faith. Mm -hmm. That measure of faith is the very faith that you have the ability to, it, it can measure as far as you want it to go. Right. Based upon how you go and use it. Mm -hmm. So, where we have a renewed mind is the fact that we've been given the measure of faith. And the Lord took me to Luke chapter 5. And he took me to the story, which is one of my favorite stories concerning Peter and his disciples cleaning their nets. And Jesus is being thronged about in the multitude. Mm -hmm. And he sees Peter's boat and he steps up into Peter's boat. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the evangelist in me says that whatever God's put inside of your hands, what, is, what are you going to give back for God to use as a platform for ministry? That's right. Uh, that's right, God. What are you going to use? What are you, what are you going to do in your life and give back to the Lord that he's already put in your hands to use for a platform for ministry? Uh, but here's the beautiful thing is, Peter, you know, Jesus says, now, Peter, now that I've had a chance to use your platform that you gave back to me for ministry, here's what I want you to do, Peter. I want you to push out. That's right. I want you to launch out, Peter. Mm -hmm. He says, Lord, but Lord, we have toiled. What did he do? The first thing he did, and the first thing you and I typically do, is we revert back to our experience. That's right. Mm -hmm. He reverted back to his experience, and when he reverted back to it, he was recounting what took place. We know the word says, that Jesus said, cast your nets, pluralized. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what Peter did is he said, I'm going to cast my net. See That's you. right. Let me ask you a question. Did Peter have the fullness of confidence in what Jesus was telling him? Yeah. If he only casted one net, he didn't. He had doubt, but he said what? But Lord, at your word. Mm -hmm. But Lord, at your word. What I heard you say in here tonight is the fact that if faith is at your word, Lord, open up this home group. At your word, Lord, you may not understand it all. You may have doubt. Mm -hmm. Whatever the Lord's asking of you, you still may have doubt. But here's the beauty of walking in obedience. Mm -hmm. I've been asked the question time and time again, Brian, I can't believe how much faith you have. I said, I don't have faith. I have obedience. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because in the obedience comes the blessing. In the obedience is a confirming of the measure of faith that's inside of you. You may have doubt, but still walk in faith. And in that moment, what Peter did is even though he didn't believe to the fullness of what Jesus was that's telling right. him to do. Mm -hmm. He tapped into the measure of faith, Amen. which is how the kingdom functions. So what we need to be reminded of is you don't need levels of faith to get God to move in your life. Mm. It's not like, did I have enough faith to receive the word of knowledge that Tim just spoke? Receive it. That's right. Obedience. Receive it. That's right. Come on. Receive it. Hallelujah. That's all you got to do. And watch the hand of God yes. function in your life. Amen. Amen.